Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, you guys. Welcome to Sundays in the Studio with Sandy. So excited you guys are here. Oh, I see that there are many people in the chat um, that are experiencing a lot of snow and wintry weather. So I hope you guys are staying warm and being safe. Um, I have my little hot tea. It's chamomile, chamomile lavender, and honey. Um, just to stay warm here in Georgia, because it is, um, oh my gosh, it doesn't say on my thing, but it was 40 just a minute ago. And we're expecting some gusts of wind and rain and maybe a little ice, maybe a little wintry mix, um, which is rare for us because we don't do that in the South. <laughs> we're not used to it like you guys are up in the Midwest and the, um, the North and in Canada. In fact, my son in Connecticut slammed with snow right now, so... Hello guys. Hi Linda. Hi Henriette. Hi Keiko. Hi Jessica. Super excited you're here as well. Um, Heidi Ho. <laughs> I just adore you, Chris. Hi Molly Ann. Um, Jenny, what a pretty name. Um, and Burl and Donna and Pat and Carrie. Lots of y'all from California. So I hope you guys are staying warm. Um, and from the Northwest as well. I see um, several of you guys on. I hope you guys are being safe with all that rain and crazy weather. So I know it's January, but it's kind of hard when it's <laughs> like the other day it was 73 here. 73, 72. Um, 72, 73, doesn't matter. It was still in the 70s and nice and warm. And then now it's cold and rainy and um, I guess par for the course for January, right? Hi, Norma Jean. Hope you're having a fantastic birthday week. Um, my friend uh, Norma Jean, sweet, sweet lady, just celebrated her 90th birthday. And let me tell you, she probably paints more than I do. <laughs> um, still drives, paints, just has a quick wit about her. So fun, so fun. Love you. Mm. Robin Storm, is it snowing like crazy up there for you right now in Georgia? Um, Hi, Diane. Good, so good to see you on. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Jolene um, from Bear, Delaware. Hi, Lois. Hi, Tracy. Good to see you on. Um, I don't know. I keep picking. I keep putting my tea down, picking it up, putting it down, picking it up. But it's so nice and warm and toasty. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Good to see you on. Uh, cold here, but not snowing. 25 and 7 inches of snow in North Carolina. Wow. That's where I was born in North Carolina. So, um, well, I know so many of y'all are experiencing this, this uh, winter weather and snow and the um, temperatures and the minus. No, thank you. <laughs> Can't do it. It kills my bones and my joints. It hurts so bad. So, no snow here in Maine. Wow. How about you, Margo, in Idaho? Do you have snow? Hi, Helen. Hello, Penny. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I am going to move that so I don't spill it. Um, hi, Judy. Good to see you on. Hi, Lucy. North Carolina is one of your favorite states. Me too. Me too. Not just because I was born there, but we used to um, travel every year when we lived in Southern California. We would travel back every year to go to Asheville, North Carolina. My mom um, was a baton instructor for the drum majorettes of america um, which was very big all over the u.s but between california and north carolina we would travel every year by car four days <laughs> i loved it i love to travel by car um, i miss traveling so lovely day here 20 today minus 20. oh my gosh tracy i went ahead and did a little prepping um, just to save us a little bit of time um, love this surface. This surface is from Cupboard Distributing, and let me find the right there, cdwood.com, Cupboard Distributing, and if I'm not mistaken, it's on sale. It was on sale last week, so maybe it's still on sale, um, but if you go to Cupboard Distributing, which is Chris Hoy's website, um, I love this surface, and I don't know, it's just so pretty. So that is the uh, website and also the item number for that. All right. 
We have a daffodil festival here in March, so I really need to paint this. We'll watch today and then order the pattern. Thank you, Peggy. How fun. Where are you that there would be a daffodil festival? That sounds so much fun. Um, like so much fun. What amazing give it fun brushes would love to win. Um, thank you guys so much. Again, all you have to do is like, comment, share. Um, and I will draw next week. Um, I'm going to pop on next Sunday for a small little lesson here. Um, but nothing like a, um, it's going to be more like the evergreen trees that I did to show you how I do something more than it is a project. Okay. So our piece, what I did, let me find the other side. Okay. So what I did is I base coated, um, the surface with a layer of multi-purpose sealer. Okay. Not always necessary, but I do it just to be safe. If you have any kind of wood grain or anything pop up and you want it smooth, all you have to do is take some sandpaper, sand it down, put another layer. Okay. So what I did from here, I'm just going to show you. I went ahead and prepped, and this is a series. So my daffodil is um, one of three right now, um, and the other two aren't finished. I have a tulip, and then I also have a wild iris. Um, but same surface, same stencils and stamps used, um, and yeah, just love the way it looks. All right, so once I did that, you can transfer your pattern on if you want to. But I went ahead and I used the um, stylized Fleur de Lis. Oh, someone just sent me a friend request. All right, we'll put that to the side. Gloucester County, Virginia. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. You never do small lessons, Sandy. <laughs> well, thanks, Molly Ann. Um, but next week's going to be probably a little product info and... Um, instead of like a full on lesson where there's a pattern packet and stuff, just to keep it short and sweet and I'll announce the winners then. Okay, so what I wanna do is take, get my palette here, and I'm using a combination of paints today. Um, and those are in the pattern packet. I do my, oops, hello. I do my entire supply list and then I give you, um, you know, the fluid acrylics and the Americana substitutes but we're using warm white. So let's put a little bit of that out. Once my multi-purpose sealer dries, I go ahead and paint the, both surfaces, the wood and the frame, um, with slate gray. All right? Um, so I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna move those over there. I do want to look at the comments in every, every now and then, but um, I also wanna share and show how I painted this. So I will look up and if I miss any comments at all or questions, I will definitely come back and answer those, all right? So much knowledge shared. Thank you, Lucy, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so it's base coated with slate gray. Then I'm gonna take the stylized, um, <laughs> Fleur de Lis, and I went ahead and stenciled it on here, but I wanted to show you how to get that nice, soft, subtle stenciling. The thing is, you can turn this stencil. It doesn't have to just be one way. You can turn it sideways. You can flip it over, all right? But what I'm going to do is bring my um, Stencil Pro, so this one is a 5 8 load it up with warm white, and then you want to take a paper towel and wipe almost all of it off. Even when you think, oh, I have no paint left on my brush, I promise you, you do. A good way to check that, you can do that right in the palm of your hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and if you have too much paint, you know you need to wipe more off. I think that's good, that's a little dusting. And so I'm gonna bring this up here. You can tape it in place. If you want, I'm usually pretty bad, I just hold it. Um, but we'll tape that. Soft circular motions, counterclockwise, clockwise. We just wanna add a little interest into the background. So nothing too major, okay, nothing too dark. Now, here's a tip. If you get 
that too dark, you can come in with a paper towel and you can wipe it. See how you can hear me scrubbing that surface. That will take the paint down. If you wanna take it down a little more, you can use a baby wipe. Okay, we just don't want it to be exact and perfect. And then you can also take very fine little sandpaper or a little sanding pad and you can also sand that, all right? But if you start with just a little bit of paint, you should be good to go. So, have this one over here. <laughs> I'm trying not to get my stencil into my paint. Wipe most of that off. Line it back up. Now, what I would suggest is go ahead and put your pattern on first. When you put your pattern on, then you can kind of decide where you want these stencils to go. Um, I hand drew mine out just to get an idea. Oop, I can already tell that's too much paint. Wipe more of it off. Counterclockwise, clockwise. Counterclockwise, clockwise. Um, but with your pattern on there, you'll already be able to see where, um, where you want to lay these out, where you would see them, where they will show up. This one, I just turned it on its side. And again, soft circular motions, counterclockwise, clockwise. And if it's too dark, I auto automatically do that. I don't know why. It just, it comes off and it lightens it. You can use the paper towel method like I showed you. So down here we have one underneath that leaf. Counterclockwise, clockwise, again, does not have to be a solid image. Okay, there, I'm gonna pick up a little more paint, wipe a lot of it off. And this one I did to the side. Let's see, about there. Okay, that one came out super dark, so I'm just going to take my baby wipe, wipe some of that off. There we go. All right, so daffodils represent hope. American Cancer Society has an annual event for the daffodils. That's awesome, and what a great meaning for that flower, right? I love them. Okay, and then we have one right down here. They're just, they're happy flower. Kind of like a pansy. You know, they say the pansy smiles at you with the way it's drawn. Um, and I, I should have written this down because when I was looking at what I wanted to paint, there are like 10,000 different um, daffodils with all the different um, ways that they mesh them together. Can't think of the word. I'm sure you guys can as well. Um, put that in if you think of it. But, you know, when they take a little bit of this flower and a little bit of this flower and they put it together and it makes a new flower? <laughs> Why can I not think of what that is? All right, so there are my uh, stencils for the Fleur de Lis. And then um, my stamp. So I use two stamps. I use the um, Vintage Note, which is one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, I think I've used this for like the last 10 years or how long it's been out. I love it. And then the little postage stamp, uh, cancellation stamp from the Grunge Script Stamp. Again, all this is in the e-packet, has all the um, um, product numbers and everything for it. I do carry these on my website. You can also find the Stampendous Stamps. Um, Deb Antonick carries them, paintingwithdeb.ca. You can also find them with Tracy at tracymoreau.net. Um, so let me show you how you can load your stamp up. There's a few different ways. You can use a makeup wedge to load up that paint, sponge it on. You can use a brayer if you wanted to, and you could roll that out, roll it on top of your stamp. I'm going to use one of these. Um, I'm not a big fan of these brushes, but they work great for putting paint on a stamp. So I'm going to pull that down on the palette. I think you can see that here. And we'll just work that in. And then all you have to do is tap it. Tap lightly. Okay. Now, what we want to do 
So what was the name of the script stamp? The script stamp is the grunge script stamp. Um, and I have a section on my website under stamps. You'll find that it comes with a bunch of really awesome stamps that I love to use. And then vintage note. Okay, so for this one, you just want to touch it here and there, but not everywhere. We don't need anything that's perfect. We Well, hello, that, I guess I waited too long. Let's get some more paint. Now, the thing with um, putting paint on your stamps is you definitely want to rinse this off. Make sure you get the um, paint off of your stamp. And so I'm just kind of stamping here and there. Again, does not have to be exact. You're only going to see the inside of that part anyway with the frame. But if you uh, don't have a piece with the frame, I would definitely go right off the edges so that you don't have, you know, that stencil's not fully here and fully here. You want that to go off the edge. It just adds interest to your piece for it not to all be the same. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. And I'm going to show you that I take my stamp and my stencil brush. Thank you, Tracy, for sharing that link. Um, and then you can wash your stencil, your stamp, and your brush with a little hand sanitizer. Now, what's key is you definitely want to rinse your stamp with water. Because hand sanitizer has al rubbing alcohol in it and it will dry out that rubber, make it brittle. So you definitely wanna make sure that you, oop, and be careful with those delicate stamps. You don't wanna rip those or tear those, okay? And then I just wipe those off and I'm gonna throw this in my water basin, rinse it out, put it to the side to dry, okay? And then we'll get that cleaned up as well. Okay, so we're going to move this aside to dry. And let's come to the frame. So on the frame, I used the, um, this is M23. This is my scroll work that Tracy Moreau did magic with and turned it into this gorgeous um, scroll stencil. It's been one of my favorites since we started the stencil line. And we're going to stencil this on the frame. And you can move it around however you want to. Again, using the warm white, very, very lightly, nothing too dark. We're just going to do the entire frame, okay? So just move it here and there, a little bit more paint. Probably not gonna do the entire thing. I think you get the gist of what it is that I'm doing. But I do wanna show you a trick get that on there and again just move it I try and move it so that I don't have a flat edge see how that one right there has a flat edge I like that to go off the surface okay just like that all right so what I want to show and share with you guys is when you do that, or when I did this, it was too bright. When I went and put this over my surface um, that was already painted with my daffodil, I, um, I needed to tone it down. So I'm going to get my heat tool. And if you're not familiar with these, I just got another shipment. Love them. The Ranger Heated Tool. It's very quiet. Dries very, very fast. All right. So once you do that, if it's like, oh, that's too bright, all you have to do is come back and take your base color, which is slate gray. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the palette and a three quarter flat brush. Thank you guys for sharing those links. I greatly appreciate it. All right, so water in my brush, just a touch of that slate gray, work it in, make it nice and wet. And you're gonna paint a wash right over that stenciling. See how that just tones that down? So it will it will make it nice and toned down and not so vibrant. Again, I'm using warm white instead of titanium white, and then I toned it down even more with that slate gray so that you get a little more muted look to it instead of it being, you know, too, too bright. So I'm gonna wipe that off. 
so that you can see the difference. So see that one has the wash on it and no wash. So again, it will tone it down for you. Alrighty, so let's get our piece. I went ahead and um, drew my design on. I base coated the petals and the top of the center with warm white. All right, and um, let me move this. I wanna move this so I can see it, but I don't know where <laughs> without it falling over. There we go. Okay, now when you put your pattern on, I'm going to turn this over. There's a different design on here. It means nothing, but actually we'll do it on this one. Hello. So when you put your pattern uh, on, it's to be lined up with that upper left corner. And then I just cut off this part and I overlapped it slightly. So if you just slide it up until they meet, and then you can tape that in place and transfer out your pattern. All right. So what I also did, just to make sure that my piece was centered, if you're worried about yours being centered, is to lay the frame on top and take, let's find a, um, a general white chalk pencil, okay? And you can just, right in the corners, do just a little marking, Okay, so see the little mark there? That way you'll, you'll know that you're right inside that frame like you're supposed to be. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. Alrighty, so what I wanted to do on the petals, again, one, um, two coats of warm white on the stem and the leaf I used my favorite, the DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylics. Okay, so I use sap green, but in place of that, you can use my favorite green in the Americana line, which is Plantation Pine. So completely up to you. Um, so I did one coat of sap green on the stem and the leaf, two coats of warm white on the flower. Okay, and I'm going to get out my 3 8 angle. Get that out rinse it off, and let's get out, I'm actually gonna move this palette paper to a clean sheet. Just move that over and I'll use that later. All right, so a little bit of Payne's Gray. And remember I shared with you guys, you wanna take those things right off, that little cluster of paint that likes to dry there, because it won't let your lid close tight on any bottle of paint. It's just a good idea to get that off. All right, and I'm gonna get out some Dari Lied Yellow, sounds better when you say it with a southern accent. Dari Lied, are the petals flat on the board? Looks like they are lifting off. <laughs> They're actually flat on the board. Um, but on the finished piece, Lori, I will show you how to add a little bit of a cast shadow, okay? So we're gonna do that now before we get started so I can show you that cast shadow and that effect of it lifting right up off the board. Um, I love that, especially here, right? And then some of the petals, you can see where I did that cast shadow, have a super easy way to make that happen. Okay, so you wanna get a flat brush, like a four. Um, you can even use a two if you wanted to, but a number four, I'm gonna get it very wet, and I'm gonna pick up just the tiniest touch of Payne's Gray. Okay, a little bit more water. Tiniest touch of Payne's Gray. And I do this on um, a lot of my surface color. You know, the background doesn't have to be gray. But this Payne's Gray, to me, gives a very natural shadow effect. Okay, so with that, if you're afraid, like, ooh, that's too dark, take a piece of paper, test it, see how it's going to look. Okay, I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in just to the flower so that you can see. Okay, let's move that down. Alrighty. So, I already started to do a little bit of shading and I thought, oop, hold your horses, Sandy. You gotta show them that part. <laughs> Cause I do think it makes such a big difference. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with that, see my palette over here, very inky, Payne's Gray. If you don't have the media line, you can use regular Payne's Gray. If you don't have this, soft black 
will work great, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out here and mimic the shape of that petal. And then I'll come here. So I'm coming away from the petal so that the tip, let me hold that up so you can see. Okay, so see that one's right next to the petal. This one I did where the tip of that petal comes here and down. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Just come away from that petal just a little bit. Add in a little cast shadow there. I have one right up underneath here. Right up underneath there. And again, come away from that piece just a little so that it stands out and stands up. And then I have just a little bit right up underneath here. Okay just to get that flower to pop from that background. Now over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the shape of that stem, but I'm away from the stem. There's a little space between my brush and the stem to give the illusion, let's zoom out just a little so you can see that, that the light is hitting it and it's casting a shadow on the right side, okay? Now, let's zoom in closer here. This is the problem with this piece that's, this is like a uh, six by 14. So if I zoom all the way out, you can see the whole piece, but then you can't see all the details. So now what I wanted to do on here was come away from the stem, the stem, hello, come away from the leaf, and I'm gonna come down just a little bit lower. I'm gonna push and paint. I'm gonna do it just a little bit darker because I don't think that that's showing up as well on camera as I'd like for it to. Okay, so I'm gonna come down, press, come right next to that leaf. There, there we go. Okay, and you wanna try not to go over it too many times. If you do, it will start to lift on you. I didn't put one here, but you definitely could put, you know, a little shadow for that side of that leaf there. Okay, so just love this cast shadow right there for that stem. Okay, let's move back up to our flower. I'm gonna get a couple of things going. We're gonna switch it up, move around from our flower to our stem and leave, and then back, and then of course our cute little bee. So I'm gonna use a 3 8 angle. Let me get my black gold here. And I do wanna get a little bit of Payne's Gray on the toe of my brush. So if you're not familiar with an angle brush, it has a toe and a heel. The toe is the longer part, the heel is the part that's down there. Think of it like you're gonna stub your toe because it's sticking out further than everything. So I'm gonna load that on the toe only. I've got moisture in my brush. Great little tip from my friend Lana Lamb is if you take a little bit of water, she uses a spritz bottle, but if you put a little bit of water over here, that way you can come pick up just a touch to get that paint to move. Okay, so what I wanna do first just to, I like to give myself some guidance, like, okay, where do these petals separate? I can see it because when I base coated it on, I base coated it with the shape of the petal. So I pulled it to the right at an angle, almost like parentheses and pull it to the left and straight down the middle. So when you do that, you can still see some of the brush strokes, okay? So from there, I went ahead and just shaded in between these petals very loosely. Nothing pretty or exact just yet. Okay, up underneath that center. There, I need to set that down. Okay, and then do I have a little shadow? I have just a little bit of a shadow here, right around that flower center. Again, picking up just a touch. And I have just a little bit of water in my brush. We're gonna pull that right down. Shade underneath that little bowl that's in the center there. Let me zoom in even more so that you can see. Even more, there we go. Although, you know, when we get real close to things, 
Um, they kind of look like a hot mess. Oh, Helen, I'm so sorry it's freezing up on you. I haven't seen any um, freezing up on my end, but I have to say I have seen a lot of it on Facebook the last week um, with freezing up. So you might need to come back in, uh, go out, come back in. Brenda, yes, you can do the cast shadows after. A lot of times I will wait till after. Um, but with a white flower, I have to tell you, sometimes I do it before because I'm afraid I'm going to get right into my petal that I worked so hard on. All right. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that Payne's Gray on the toe of the brush. Loosely, loosely. Float some color there. Now, I wanted to come in right at the um, edge. So I'm just inside the edge of that petal and I'm gonna float a little bit of Payne's Gray on. Okay, this is just gonna start giving my petal some dimension. The toe that has the paint is right next to that edge, but in just a little bit. Okay, and I have a little bit of a flip here. And we'll make that stand out even more in a second. And then let's see, we've got a little bit here. And again, just paints gray on that brush. We're gonna intensify these. But for now, that's gonna give you, again, just the, the movement and placement of those petals. Okay, don't be afraid to use those fingers to soften it out. All right, so I know I have a little bit stronger there. A little bit there. Okay. So let's go ahead and get out a little bit of Hansa Yellow Light. So I already got out the Diary Light Yellow. If you don't have this or you wanna use regular Americana, um, you can use Saffron Yellow, which is my favorite in the uh, Decor Americana line. You can also use um, like School Bus Yellow, I think, in Folk Art, similar. Um, and then Hansa Yellow Light, if you don't have that, again, you can use Yellow Light. All right, so let's get a little bit of that out. Hello, Janie Kaufman, so nice to see you on. You have a um, giveaway sitting here from last year that I still have your name on, Janie Kaufman. I need you to message me so I can get it sent to you. Um, okay, so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna take a little bit more of that water in my brush, just on the toe, kind of work that in, get a little bit of that Payne's Gray, and I'm going to move down here. It doesn't matter if it's on the toe only. That's how I loaded it though. And then I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna move my brush to the side. Because what I wanna do now is I'm going to slide on the chisel edge and I'm going to pull just a few lines, a couple lines on each petal or more than a couple. <laughs> so if you saw my um, anemone painting, um, it's on YouTube, my YouTube channel. I did this on the petals and I just loved the look. Just gives you that nice, soft, subtle veining that's on those petals, we're gonna brighten them up. Don't be scared. We're gonna brighten them up with a little bit of white, our petals, that is. But I did want some of those, um, I wanted some of those lines down the veins. Um, to give it a little, almost like, I don't some texture, basically. And, you know, they're, they're a little ruffly. Uh, depending on what daffodil you're looking at. So got that on there. Now I'm gonna take a little bit, rinse my brush, a little bit of Hansa Yellow Light, a little bit of Dari Light Yellow. And I is this is all about layering. I love to layer when I paint and I especially love to layer with the um, fluid acrylics because they just look so pretty together. Okay. So with that mixture on the toe of my brush, I'm just going to lightly, loosely float that in. So again, it's Hansa Yellow Light, a little bit of Diary Light Yellow. Kind of get a little bit of color in here, the base of our petals. You get that punch of color from that Diary Light Yellow. So nice and vibrant. 
let's get it off the center. We don't want it there just yet. And wherever you're laying that color, that's where the toe of that brush is going. Okay. And then a little bit up here. Just like that. Okay, so let's dry that. A little bit too much there. Okay, so let me show you on this petal right here so that the lines make a little bit. So see how those, those petals kind of, that line that I did with the paints gray curves with the petal. All right, so you want to do it where it, it goes with the movement and shape of that petal. All right, now I'm going to take a color combination that I had never used before until I did this flower. And I wanted to intensify it, the shading, um, so a little bit of Dari Light Yellow and the tiniest touch of Payne's Gray. Now, Payne's Gray has blue, a lot of blue in it. So when you mix that with yellow, you're going to get this green. And I was, I loved it. As soon as I did it, I'm like, oh, it's my new favorite color combination. So I want to paint this little vein right down the center of that leaf and I'm going to bump it up with a little more Payne's Gray. There we go. Okay, a little bit here. Let me come up here. I still think it needs just a little bump, a little more of that Payne's Gray. There we go. And you can use the end of the brush. I just use my finger. So let's get that turned around, make sure I'm on camera. There we go. All right, so when you pull it, again, you want your brushes flat. And you're pulling it with the shape of that petal. Pull it out just a little. Don't know if I have enough on there. Okay, so we've got these nice little veins right down the center. Now, look at this one compared to the others. I think the others need a little bit more of that Payne's Gray. Just a little more of that Payne's Gray. Don't worry about the um, where it ends. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And not that it's not fixed. Uh, I forgot a petal, hello. Um, but I toned it down with a little bit of white. Okay, so let's zoom out just a little. Okay, loving, loving, loving that right there. That dark, rich, dark color. You need that to make it stand out. Again, going with the flow and the shape of that petal. Yes, I just licked my finger and took that off. So my DNA is part of that painting. <laughs> okay. So this one needs to be bumped up just a little bit more. Oh, my hands look so old on camera. Hello. Alrighty. So let's bring that down. Let's leave that for just a second. I still can't say that yellow name. <laughs> A diary, like you're writing in a diary, Robin, lied, diary lied. <laughs> so it just sounds better when you say it with a Southern accent. Okay, so I'm gonna get out some warm white. And I'm gonna get out some titanium white. So I grab titanium white here. I did not, I need to turn around and grab it. All right, so let's see. Titanium white, okay. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna leave all this in the center to set up for a second and come to my um, rigger. So a zero or two rigger, whichever you have. You can use a liner brush if you want to. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of warm white, touch of titanium white. And I'm going to give each petal 
just a nice little outline on one side of the petal only and then push and bring it in. Okay, so you can do that little tip. Let's zoom just a little bit, that little tip. Bring it right onto the petal. And then on this one, again, I'm using, bring you my palette and show you real quick. A little bit of warm white. I have water in my brush. A little bit of warm white, touch of titanium white, mix, mix. Slide. I like to give that nice little tip to that petal, okay? And I don't like to see where it ends, so just kind of push your finger in. There we go. Come down here. That petal's looking awfully dark. All right, so push and slide. Lifting up on your pressure, you get that nice thin little end, okay? Now, I'm going to take my heat tool and dry that. And then let's come back to our angle brush. So, I'm going to take my 3 8 angle brush, get it damp, and then I'm going to load it up with some white on the toe. And then I'm just going to work it in. So, it's on the toe, but I, it's on my whole brush. If I control how much paint I put on it, um, it will just, it'll look better when we layer it. So just a little bit on the toe, work that into the brush. I'm gonna tap it on my paper towel just to get rid of some of that excess paint. And then what I wanna do from here is I'm just gonna pull on the chisel edge of that brush. And I'm gonna pull some lines very, very lightly. Can you see that? And you wanna go with the shape of that petal. So I'm gonna go with the shape of that petal. And I can already see what I'm doing wrong. Hello. Let's get on camera there. Okay, it's easier. You saw what I was doing there. I was pulling from here out. I want to pull from here in. So pull from the tip of the petal and then with the shape of the petal. Okay, so much easier than going into that following the shape of that petal. Am I giving you guys whiplash with up, down, turning this thing around? <laughs> okay, so we put those Payne's gray, pain gray, hello, Payne's gray lines in, and then I put the, um, the white lines on. Now, just like we did with the frame, with toning that down, if you feel like this is a little too much, all you have to do is a slight little wash of that warm white, just to soften it out just a little bit. You still see that intense color, but it's not so in your face, okay? So that's just a little touch of warm white on the toe of my brush with a little bit of water, all right? All right, let's move on. I know I said I was gonna move to the stem, but I wanna stay on the flower because I'm liking where this is going. So, I made a spaghetti sauce cooked all night long. Yum, I'll be up Lucy for dinner later. <laughs> Love the gray background, great tips on shadows, how to get the color combinations. Thank you, Darlene. Oh, Carol, I'm so sorry, it keeps freezing. So, alrighty. You know, that little outline on the edge just gives, you know, again, enough little ruffle, little interest to your flower. Um, okay, so let's do the center. And I started to do that, um, in the step-by-step -step pictures, you'll see, I started to do it a little bit different than how I've done my daffodils in the past. Um, and I liked, again, where it was going because of that combination of Diary Light Yellow and Paints Gray. So I'm gonna pick up on, this is a number four. Um, you can use an eight, a four, a six flat. I have Warm White, which is the Americana, and Hansa Yellow Light, which is the media line. The great thing about these paints is you can use them together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna come in and paint this little ruffly part. I 
right? And then I'm gonna take the same thing and I'm gonna go right down into this U. Now, if you're worried about here and losing your shape, you can always leave a little gap of color, but I can see the brush stroke, so I'm just going to go right up to it. And paint that in. Okay, so let's dry that. Okay, and let's do another coat. So I'm gonna use some warm white, some Hansa yellow light. We'll get another coat. Now this surface, I will say, if you're seeing some texture in my paint, um, I had a different idea when I was, uh, when I first got these surfaces. And I was gonna do these containers, which I still plan to do. So there was a little gesso on it. I just sanded it but I think you can still probably see a little bit of that in that um, coming through. And that's completely fine with me. I don't mind it at all. But just if you're wondering why it's showing a little bit more texture. All right, so have our flower center. And I love how this brings the whole flower together. What we're gonna do next. You can use Sunny Day. Yes, Linda, you can use, in fact, um, I pulled it, and I don't know, I think I put it to the side. Definitely, you can use Sunny Day, okay? All right, now what we wanna do is I'm gonna take my um, 3 8 angle brush, rinse it out, and I'm gonna pick up some Diary Light Yellow. Let's just work that in on the side. So it's on the toe of the brush, and I'm going to put some on this left side and I'm just gonna it's called walking it over so the heavy color is at the edge and I'm just gonna walk it over until there really isn't much of anything okay so see how it's a little bit darker on this side okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of diary light yellow and a tiny touch of paints gray and let's work that in oop got too much paints gray work that in now, that little dip right in the center, think of it like a U, all right? So it's a little U with a couple little wiggles. Okay, so we're gonna start over here and I'm going to float that down. Oops, that is a horrible, horrible float. Hello, let's get that off. Let's switch. I only have 800 brushes out here right now. Um, I'm going to switch to a quarter inch angle. Okay. So quarter inch angle. Let's go ahead and pick up some of that Diary Light Yellow Touch of Paints Gray. And we're going to float that color. Now when I'm floating it, I want my brush flat. It's I'm not up on the chisel edge. That will leave a line similar to how it did last time when I just did it and it messed up and looked ugly. So we're going to come here and I'm going to little wiggle, wiggle back up to the side. Okay. So see how that, it looks like now I can stick my finger right in there. I'm going to take the same color combination, Diary Light Yellow, Payne's Gray, put a little under that lip there and a little down that right side. See how that, oh, I love, love, love that color combination. Again, not sure why I've never used it before, but Diary Light Yellow, again, Saffron Yellow, Payne's Gray will give you the same look, okay? I do wanna bring a little bit heavier. Shading right in there, and then we'll walk it up just a little. Now we'll take some of that and go right up underneath our, I think my wiggles here got a little bit more wiggly than on my original. That's okay. I'm gonna leave it. Okay, get 
some of that in there. I have to soften that out just a little. Well, hello. Some days are great float days, some days aren't so great. So let's float that again. That's the great thing about paint, it's just paint. You can wipe it off and fix it. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse that off. I'm gonna pick up some titanium white on the toe of my brush. So let me get my palette up here. Okay, so just on the toe, just a little bit, and I'm gonna flatten that. Okay. Now the toes down and I'm going to float that color right on the edge of that little wiggle. And then just kind of soften that out. And then I'm gonna take, wipe off my brush, a little bit of that um, Payne's Gray and Diary Light Yellow mixture and I'm just going to pull lines. So I'm on the chisel edge and I'm sliding very little paint on there, and I'm sliding from the edge of that um, petal in with just a touch of that Diary Light Yellow and Payne's Gray. Okay, wipe it off. Tiny, tiny touch of white. I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, so let's leave that alone for just a second. I wanna come back in with that quarter inch angle. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Dari Light Yellow, a little touch of Payne's Gray. Make that little combination right there. Okay. And then I want to really darken that shading right up underneath this lip from that center right down see how much oh that just really really made that stand out from the edge um, from that center and from the petal so a little bit up underneath there now here what i want to do i want to do this one differently because look at the center and how it looks like it's sitting inside um, and this petal kind of comes up and out, right? So to get that look, we're gonna do the shading on the center bulb part here. And we're going to bring that down and then slightly up. Okay, to get that petal to come out and over. A little bit more color. And again, just nice, loose little floats. Bring that yellow in. Okay. And if anything gets too dark and you hold it back, which is key, you definitely want to hold it back and look at it. When we're up close, we look, we see the things we think look wrong, but they're not always wrong. So hold it back, look at it, evaluate it, and see if you need to intensify um, your darks or um, lighten them up. And if you need to lighten it up in any way, you can just go right back to your warm white and brighten it up with a little wash of warm white. Okay, I can already tell on that petal right there. Hello. Little too much. Let me take some of that away. So I don't have anything on my brush, just a little bit of water. Got rid of that, okay. So I am going to thin, I feel like these got a little wide. I'm gonna thin out that center vein just a little with some warm white. See how I'm curving it? So I'm curving it so that it flows with that petal. You want it to flow and move like the petal. OK, 
Okay, and again, that's just with warm white. too much. Okay. And then need a little shadow right here. Again, just a little bit more of that Payne's Gray. I just love the intensity of that shading on my original. Okay, in the center, I just did that same combination. So I'm using a rigger brush. Again, if you're not familiar with the rigger brush, it's what it looks like a liner, but it's flat. Okay, you can use a liner brush, you can use a small flat, whichever you have, but a little Dari Light Yellow, a little bit of Payne's Gray, very damp brush, not dripping, but damp. And I'm going to put in very haphazardly, these three little stamens in the center. Okay, just kind of get a shadowy little look and we will dry that. I see I need to fix up my center just a little. Okay, so let's let that dry and I'm gonna come back with this um, Dari Light and a little bit of Payne's Gray mixture, just a touch. And I'm gonna slide on the chisel edge right here, just to add a little bit of um, texture to that center. I always like to touch it. It's it's quite hot right now, so you don't want to put your paint and your brush right to it right now. It will take it and zap it right out of your brush, and it'll be difficult to move. So leave it for a second. Let it cool down. Um, now I'm going to take a small mezzaluna. Okay, mezzaluna is just a dry brush. It's got a blend of bristles, pretty stiff compared to, um, say, your black gold, black, silver brushes, all right? These are nice and soft. So I wanna take a little bit of white. Let's come over here to my palette. I feel like I'm so zoomed in, but I want you to see all the detail in that flower. Okay, so I'm gonna load it up, and just like a stencil brush, I work it into the brush, and then I wipe almost all of it off the brush. So let's get another paper towel, wipe almost all of it off. And I want a dry brush, a nice little spot right here. of white, and I'm kind of doing a very haphazard movement, scrubbing that on so that I don't end up with a circle or hard lines around the edge. And then I'm gonna take the same thing, load it up, wipe it off, kind of put a little bit of a highlight here. And then anywhere I feel on the petals that I need to soften just a little, I can do that as well. So I'm feeling like here I can soften just a touch. And again, it's just a skim of paint. So nothing heavy. It's gonna help take care of um, softening any of those harsher shadows that maybe I put on. But I definitely love the effect that it gives you right here. Again, I'm gonna make that a little bit brighter. Wipe it off. And just scrub that in. Just get a nice little highlight right on that bulb, okay? And if you do that and you get it too white, all you have to do is a wash of yellow right over it, Hansa Yellow Light. Okay, so now let's pick up a little bit of um, Dari Light Yellow, little bit of Hansa Yellow Light, touch of white. And just kind of see how I'm just mixing it on my, I'm brush mixing it, not mixing it down to one color. And then I'm gonna come to my little stamens and I'm just going to dot, 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 and then pull. Dot, 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 pull. Pick up a little more white. Highlight the tops. 
And there's your stamens. Okay. Quick, easy, not much to them. Okay, I'm going to rinse that out. Let's move on. I always love seeing how you paint. You get... <laughs> oh, yes, Judy, you know I love to have paint on my fingers. It's, it's kind of my, um, my sign that I was created today and that I had fun. Um, so, and I'm a little bit lazy sometimes. Like, I don't pick up a... Um, a mop brush when I probably could. I want a little brighter highlight. So I just picked up a little bit of white. And I just want a little brighter highlight on some of those that are closer to me. So I just have a little bit of white. Okay, we'll leave those alone. But I wanted to pull out so that you could see um, the details instead of so close up. Again, sometimes it gets a little too much. All right, let's move to our B. I love this little guy. Let's zoom in. And we're gonna use Carbon Black, which, did I grab it? I did not. Um, okay, so we'll use Payne's Gray. And uh, so Carbon Black or Lamp Black will work. I'm using Diary Light Yellow and Hansa Yellow Light. Um, just gonna grab my black. All right. And then a liner brush. You can use a rigger liner brush, whichever you'd like. Now on the B, he has a little bit of black at the top of his head. And I'm just dotting. Can you see that? Just dot, 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 dot. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, so I dot, 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 and it looks better if you say it, a little underneath the wing, and then dotting the little sections, and these, think of them like a very loose U, okay, a very loose U, and I'm not pulling it because I don't want to make it um, smooth, I really want to see the texture, and dot, 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 okay. And I can already tell I went a little bit high there, but that's okay because I can always connect these on the side with my black along the head. So you've got water in the brush so that it will move and flow right off that brush for you. But I do want the antennas and the legs to be very, very thin. So I don't know that I put this in the pattern packet, but if you've got a nice thin little liner brush let me come down here. This is a 15 aught um, micron. I have these on my website. You can also get them at Tracy Moreau's, uh, tracymoreau.net and jillybean.net. Let's throw some friends out there. Let's throw up that link so you can get brushes here. You can also get brushes from Lana Lamb has um, the black silver. And then you can also find some at jillybean.net, Jill Fitzhenry. And then, you know, you can always find some at thebrushguys.com. Um, and there's a promo code. So if you use that promo code, you get an additional discount. However, if you use the discount code ART, all capitals, ART, you get a discount on my website as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take that brush. I've got water in it. Pick up a little bit of black. Thank you, Margo. I appreciate that. All righty. And then I'm going to just take the little antennas, bring them to his head. Well, got to have paint on your brush to do it. There we go. And then a little squiggly for his legs. We've got one there and one there. Line there, there. So nice and thin, okay? I didn't want to, the rigger's a little on the thick side, although I'm sure I used the rigger when I did it. Um, I just want those to be nice and thin. Then I'm gonna take that same brush, same paint, and I'm just going to do very loose vein-like lines on his wings. And 
and then we will paint over those lightly. So, all right, let's rinse that out. Let's let you break the rules. Looking at some of my Christmas decor from the 80s. Yes, I'm all about breaking the rules, <laughs> Mary Lou. And you know, when you're self-taught primarily, um, I've learned so many things from my painting friends, but when you're pretty much self-taught, you you kind of break the rules because you don't know that there are rules. Does that make sense? All righty. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my rigger brush and I'm going to take a little bit of, because yellows are transparent, that's why we have the, um, the warm white or white on there. I'm going to pick up, again, just a little bit, let's get my palette here, Sandy, a little bit of white, a little bit of Hansa yellow light. Just kind of brush mix that together. And I'm going to dot, 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 dot. Dot, dot, dot. Right on those sections for our B. I'm going to leave that little bottom section white. Okay. Rinse that out. I can see I need to bring that yellow went, oops, see that water? Um, that yellow went a little too far out, so we're just going to close it off with a little bit of black. There we go. And can you guys see that closely enough, or do you need me to move it um, in? On my camera, it's looking like it's close enough. Okay. And if you get any of your yellow too wide, you can always come back in and thin some of that out and make your black. You just don't want a straight line. You want to see that texture. Okay, now let's dry that. Oh, Joyce, that's so good to hear. I hope you'll paint it. All righty. So now I'm going to pick up just a touch of white on my um, my little angle, or uh, excuse me, my rigger brush. Just pick up a little bit of white, and I'm going to start on the yellow and just do a little dot. Let me look at my, yep. And then I'll do a little tiny dot highlight on the black, on the yellow, on the black. Okay, I started on the yellow because I didn't want it to be so bright. But just a nice little highlight for our B there. I need a little touch of black right there. Okay. And then see how wide that yellow is? I was just looking at the camera. I'm like, wow, that's very, very wide. So I'm going to narrow that down just a little. We're just going to pick up a little more black. And I'm just going to dab, 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 dab. Take away some of that space. There we go. Okay, dry with our heat tool. And I'm going to turn my B upside down right to there. And where I put that black on that side, just want to make sure I have some of that yellow going. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of diary light yellow. Just a touch of that diary light on the tip of that brush. You can use an angle brush if you want to, or you can just come in and just dab a little bit on that right side. Give a little bit of a shadow. Okay, there. Oh, he's so cute. Take away a little bit of that right there. All right, now to the wings. And the wings, you want to use a very small brush. So you can use a four flat. Um, you can use that rigger brush if you want to and pull it in several strokes. But I'm going to show you how I did mine. A little bit of white, number four flat. I'm just going to load it up with white. Now we want these transparent. So I have a little bit of water in my brush. And I'm using the fluid acrylic white. All right, so, and I'm gonna sit on the corner of the brush. So you have two flat sides, camera Sandy, <laughs> two flat sides and two corners. So I'm gonna sit on the corner and I'm gonna pull, sit on the corner and pull. Sit on the corner and pull, sit on the corner and pull. 
Okay. It does help when you turn it to sit on the corner and pull and turn your piece if you have to. See, my pull wasn't so pretty on this side as it was on the other. Okay. It also wasn't as transparent as my original. So I'm just gonna go back with my liner, a little bit of black. And just very haphazard, loosely do these little vein lines that you see that go down the wings. Okay. Now let's zoom out just a little so that you can see our flower and our little bee and the cute. Same thing we did with the um, the petals. I'm going to take my number four flat, very wet, pick up just a touch of paint gray, work that in on your palette. Make sure it's not too dark. Again, do a little touch test on a piece of paper if you need to. And then right up underneath the B, so let's get that in so you can see it. Right up underneath the B, I'm gonna do a little cast shadow. Well, you can't see that, can you? So let's make it a little darker. It's a little cast shadow, little shadow for the wings. And then I'll go back to my rigger brush and do it for the legs. Okay, it's too hard to do it with a flat and get that little cast shadow. So just mimic the shape of those legs underneath the wings. Like that, okay? And that will lift him up from our surface. Okay, love that. Softly touch it. Is the B a stamp or pilot? Uh, the B is a line drawing, Penny. I um, I did not use a stamp. I just drew him out. Let's take away a little bit right there. But if you have a B stamp, you could definitely use a B stamp. And see how dark that black line is there compared to the other side? All you have to do is take a little bit of um, white in your brush that has water in it and just do a nice little float of color right over that and it'll tone it down but you can still see them there i like that much better okay let's dry him off okay and let's come to okay so see you can see that little shadow i think it's showing up much better since it's dry um, on my original but that little tiny shadow on the right side underneath his back leg, underneath that back leg, underneath the wings, and then just slightly underneath that wing. And then also the antenna. So see that tiny little line on the antenna? Again, that will lift that B right up off your surface. All right, let's move on to the stem. Um, and I'm not gonna be able to zoom in real close because it's quite long, but I'm gonna try and get as close as I can so that you guys can see. Okay, so I'm gonna use that number four flat brush. Don't you just love that heat tool, Karen? I, I would just be whew, taking a long time to get things done if I did not have that heat tool. Okay, so I'm gonna use the four flat. You can use an eight flat, whichever you have. I'm gonna pick up some green gold um, if you don't have green gold, you can use margarita. Um, you can use, let's see, um, a bright color. You could use citron green um, or margarita is what I used, okay? So I have green gold, put that out. Hello, even when I don't try, I get paint on me. <laughs> let's put that there and not waste it. Um, the one thing about the fluid acrylics, if you're not familiar with those, the fluid acrylics are highly pigmented. 
So your color is very intense, goes a long way. You don't need to use a lot of this paint. They're primarily transparent um, and they look beautiful layered. You get such great depth and colors. And so um, don't let the sticker price shock you because they are more expensive than your regular acrylics. But again, you, you use less of them, all right? Okay, so I have that out and I'm also gonna get out some green, uh, sap green. Again, you can use plantation pine if you don't have that. But my number four flat brush is dry. Um, I just ran that through my index finger and my middle finger to see if it's dry. I wanna come here and pick up sap green, green gold, mix that together, touch a white. Sap green, green gold, touch a white. See, I'm just brush mixing that together. Then you want to, I'm always way behind everyone else, probably takes me a couple hours more than a class or seminar. You know what, Joyce, that's quite all right. Um, I was just reading, you were answering to somebody else. Um, there's no, you, you know, take as much time as you need when you're painting. Um, again, one of the reasons I love working in my art journal, I know I've told you guys that before, um, my art journal is my place where I get to play and take as much time as I want to to see if something's going to work. So I'm going to dry that off. And then I'm just going to dry brush some of that color right down that stem. So I'm going to put it on. And then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to swipe it with my finger. So see how that just picks right up. You can use the Mezzaluna brush if you want to. primarily right in the center of that stem. Scrub back and forth a little if you want to. Just bring it right down to there. Swipe it with your finger, okay? So, and what that does, what I love about that, instead of just floating one color along one side, first off, it gives me a little texture um, second off is I might see a little bit, uh, you know, of the dark underneath here. Maybe not so much here, you know, maybe a little bit more there. And what it, that does is it just gives you variation and to me it makes it look a little bit more natural. Okay. So I'm going to put that on. Now let me zoom or bring this right up here so that you can see the bottom where it meets the stem. And that stem just, or that leaf just kind of rolls right around the bottom of that stem there. So I just brought this down right to about here. And then the rest is that stem, or excuse me, is that leaf. Okay, you can see that shading right in there. So that leaf comes around and it's on top of that stem right there. Okay, so come back up just a little. Now I left some of that Payne's gray and that dark, um, excuse me, the green, the sap green right here, but I can intensify that with some Payne's gray if I need to. So remember I had one coat of sap green on my stem and my leaf, but right up underneath that, do a little bit of Payne's gray. And then if I need to add a little on that left side for a little bit more of a shadow, again, I can do that with that quarter inch angle with just a little Payne's gray and right down that one side and if you get your bright too bright <laughs> your light too bright um, you can just take sap green and wash right over it okay let's dry that off and I did because I, I like the sketchy look of it I did come back with my mezzaluna and I added a little bit of that um, green, gold, and white. Mix that around. Just a tiny touch of Payne's gray. Oh, my goodness, Sandy. Green, gold, and white, and a tiny touch of sap green. Okay, I'll wipe that off. A little bit more white. I just wanted right in here for there to be a little bit brighter highlight. And again, I like that sketchy dry brush look. Okay. 
All right, Miss Lynn, did you see that you won one of the giveaways from last week's drawing? Not sure if you were on earlier, but I just saw your name pop up. And I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Po, Poineco? Poineco? I don't know. You'll have to let me know if that's butchered. Sorry if I did. Okay, our leaf could not be more simple. It's base coated with sap green. That's it. Okay, you can use plantation pine. But now I'm gonna take my quarter inch angle and I'm gonna load it up with that mixture, that sap green, green gold, touch of white, load it up on that brush. Just get a little bit of that moisture out. Okay, and I'm going to slide following the shape of that leaf. You can use a liner brush if you want to, but I'm just gonna follow the shape of that leaf. Don't worry if they come together and get a little too thick. There's a way to fix it. Okay, we're just gonna slide those right down. And then same thing up here. I wanna curve those a little better. Same thing on the top part of that leaf. I can start on the, um, the tip. And you just kind of mimic the shape of that leaf. Give you a little bit of texture there. Ooh, a lot of water in my brush. Okay, so again, just kind of flow those lines with that leaf, the way it's growing. Now let's dry that off. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate that. Thank you, Linda Gaddy. So, so happy you guys are here today. All right. Again, the fix, if you get those too light, too bright, um, too many, you can come in between with some sap green or you can paint a wash over it with sap green. Um, and I will show you that again because it's transparent it actually makes them show up more, I think, when you do a little wash of that sap green over them, but it also tones it down. So makes the lighter brighter, and it just brings everything together nicely. Okay. Now, we need to add a shadow, so I'm gonna pick up a little Payne's Gray on the toe of my brush. So a little Payne's Gray, Work that in on the toe only of that brush. And we want to bring that right in here up underneath that flip. Okay, so we're gonna bring it right up underneath that flip and then we're just gonna walk it down just a little bit so that you don't have just like an arc of color there. You have some of that color and you've walked it down just a little. And then right down here, it's one of my favorite, it's the little things. It's the little things that get me excited about painting, like those cast shadows. But I also loved this little, the way that leaf wrapped around and then there's a little bit of the stem. So um, it's not that major, but I do like the way it's finished. So I just picked up a little bit of the light color like I used on the leaf and right down here, I brought a little bit of that right to the leaf, okay? So just a tiny little stroke, just kind of smooth that right into that leaf. And then I also have a little flip on my leaf. So I'm gonna go back to my quarter inch angle, pick up some sap green. Let's just show you my palette here, some sap green on the whole brush, and then on the toe only, I'm gonna pick up some uh, green gold and a little bit of white, work that in. Wipe some of that off. Alrighty, and then right from the um, tip of that leaf, let's come over here. So from the tip of that leaf, 
I think this might be a little bit brighter than my original. It is. I'm going to add a little bit more sap green to it. We'll just tone it down. I don't want it super, super bright. Okay, so I'm going to slide on the chisel edge of that brush. Slide back. You can come onto the leaf and bring it around. And that's way too bright for my liking. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. See how it just sticks out. It looks like it's outlined. So let's dry that off. Oh, and I completely forgot my um, little cancellation stamp. I only have one on there um, that's real visible, but I will show you. We'll add that because um, I wanted to show you a different way to add the stamp. Set it to the side and completely forgot. Um, so let's go back to our rigger. I have a number two rigger. I'm going to pick up my sap green and a little warm white. I don't know what the directions say, but I just know I need to tone down this flip on this leaf. It's too bright. So little curl, come onto that leaf, right around, and then just let it flow right into that. Yeah, I can deal with that. <laughs> I can deal with that. Alrighty, so I'm going to turn that and get my hand out of the way. Pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray on the toe of my angle brush, okay? And then right along here, I can bring in some of that color, do a little bit of shading on the other side of that flip. Again, just to give you that nice little curl and flip on that, um, on that leaf. And I think it needs to be darker right there. There we go. We just want there to be a little bit of a shadow. Okay. So let me zoom out real quick. Well, that was real quick, wasn't it? Um, okay, so we have our flower, our stem, our leaf, our cute little bee. Um, and then on the original, I have the, uh, the little cancellation stamp, which I love. Again, this is from the Grunge Script Stamp. Now, it's good to do things in threes. So I have one here. I can see one there, and I don't see a third. So I need to add a third on my original. So on here, what I want to do is bring in some warm white. I'm just going to take a brush and just thin it out right here on your palette. Okay, nice and thin. You don't want anything too um, thick or heavy. Nice and thin little runway of paint. Then you can pick up your stamp, load it up. And I'm going to put that right about there. Okay, again, doesn't matter if it if you don't get the whole image. In fact, that's even better. All right, I want one there. And then I think I'll put one hmm, kind of thinking here and then up here. That doesn't show up at all. So we'll put another one right there. There we go. Okay, and I'll even mind that double little line there. But we've got three. And then with our frame, look how cute that is with that frame, okay? And again, if you do it and that, that right there to me is a little on the bright side, you just adjust. So everything is going and backtracking. So I would go to back to my original base color, which is slate gray, wet brush, and I can just paint right over it and tone it down. Okay, and just kind of push that right into the background. So, I don't know, hopefully you guys enjoyed that and um, we'll give it a go and paint it up. Um, 
I think it's pretty simple and straightforward and such a pretty little flower. Love daffodils. Um, they're such a happy flower. And then this is a series. So I have this one, a tulip and a wild iris. Um, the other two are not completely finished, but will be. So and let me come right up here so you guys can see me. Um, you're so welcome. I, I agree, uh, Linda, the frame just really, I don't know, just adds a lot, doesn't it? And it's such a great surface. So um, speaking of an e-packet, thank you so much for those that have ordered. And if you want to get it, you can get it on my website, um, which is right there, SantaMcTearDesigns.com. I want to share a couple things really quick with you guys. I'm involved with and doing um, this free art party. So it's called Heart Party. It's free. I'm going to pop up the link if I can find it um, right here. So the craftycrowd.com slash heart party. You can go to that website and um, join for free. And you'll have all those lessons. They are live lessons with all the different artists. And mine, I believe, is on Thursday the 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern. I'll be posting a lot about it in the next couple of weeks. Got to finish my piece and get all my stuff uploaded. But it's a free um, heart party event, art party thing that you can join um, and learn and watch all these different artists create and paint. So... Hope you guys will do that. I signed up because you're on it. Well, thank you, Donna. I appreciate that. You're so welcome, Penny. Thank you. You guys are so welcome. So for all of my friends um, in Georgia, stay safe with the snow. <laughs> and everywhere else with the weather, stay safe. With COVID, stay safe. Um, I will be back again next Sunday. Y'all leave in the comments what you want to see, what you want me to do. I was just looking to see if we still had people on. Um, and again, it's just going to be probably about 30 minutes to an hour, just a quick something. Um, and yeah, I just haven't really thought about it. Can you tell? <laughs> I just know it's not going to be another full-blown lesson. I will be back on the 6th of February with either the iris or the tulip that goes with this series. Not sure which one yet. So uh, I'll let them speak to me and tell me what they want. So um all right, guys, we'll have a fantastic day. You're so very welcome. Appreciate you guys being here and um, appreciate the support. And um, yeah, get those brushes out. Dust them off if you haven't used them in a while. Paint something. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get those brushes moving and get that paint slinging. And uh, let's start 2022 off being really super creative, okay? Y'all have a great day. Thanks for being here. Bye.